Hey guys, welcome back to another Peaceful Challenge episode. So today we're going to continue our 1.17 journey. The plan is to build a lava and more complicated obsidian farm. The obsidian farm is going to be really interesting because it's somewhat peaceful specific. In case we would have hostile mobs spawning, we would go a different route. But since we're playing peaceful, we have to do something else instead. So that's actually what I usually enjoy the most in a peaceful series. So what we would normally do with hostile mobs is to use a wizard to break the 5x5 obsidian platform in the end dimension. So you can just throw items through the end portal to regenerate the platform. I got a bot in the overworld that does it for us. We could do this yeah, technically every second. So it takes the wizard usually one second uh, to break the box after he gets hit by the snowball and then we can continuously yeah, do that in order to get obsidian. You can also do it without the wizard technically. That's something we actually did in Cycrock 1.12. So we just had a player sitting here mining away the obsidian for pickaxe. So this would be another option. We still would need yeah, a dispenser in the overworld to chunk load this. Uh, to regenerate the platform every so often. So basically once the player mine five obsidian blocks in a row. But I think this is also not too interesting. And uh, we just recently have done it on Psycraft. Today we wanted to do something new and we're gonna use the new 1.17 mechanic um, of using lava cauldrons. So if you have just a normal block for lava source on top and then a cauldron and a point the dripstone below, this allows us to get more lava. I'm just gonna quickly set this up. Previously, I made a video about that lava farm already. Then just need a dripstone with the dripstone and cauldron below. And then there's a chance the cauldron would fill up with lava. I could quickly increase the random tick speed so we can see that happening. It takes an average like 19 minutes until I get a full lava cauldron. Should be a bit quicker. There we go. Then, yeah, the player could take out the lava, place it down again, but it's getting turned into obsidian and then could mine it. So this is one way to get obsidian in a renewable fashion. And of course, you want to go large scale. All right, let's quickly check out the lava farm I designed for this. So we have got to build this one for two reasons. To just have a general lava farm. So every time we need a couple lava buckets for any Minecraft build, and we can get it from here. But also the obsidian farm is basically just an upscaled version of this lava farm. They require a lot of lava. So you always need one lava source to fill a cauldron. And the obsidian farm will be much larger than this. We probably need a, yeah, over 1000 lava buckets. So we can use the smaller farm to build the larger farm like so often. Okay, so here's how it works. Um, so we got a yeah, nice field of cauldrons here below the pointed dripstone and the player is actually stationary and all the cauldrons are pushed past the player. So each of those cauldrons would pass the spot eventually. It takes about two minutes to cycle through the whole system. Let's quickly check it out. I go in survival mode. Um, there is a dispenser dropper here on the side that would supply me with more buckets. And I'm just standing here right clicking on the cauldron. So some inventory is filled up. Uh, yeah, the other buckets will drop down. So I can start the whole thing with just pressing this button here. Oh, what happened? I think the trap door opened. Anyway, <laughs> okay, now the farm is working. So all the cauldrons are pushed past the player. It takes about you know, a little bit over two minutes to empty them all. Okay, that's about it. You can also just stop. All the lava buckets are put into a shulker box filler. We can finally use yeah, renewable shulker shells on the peaceful server. And then we can yeah, take out the filled shulker boxes from there. Okay, so the plan is now to build this farm. I was thinking we could maybe build it in the nether. Just go a couple blocks from the nether hub in one of the tunnels. Just build it right next to it. And then maybe have an obsidian portal that connects to your overworld and have the proper obsidian farm yeah, somewhere on the overworld of this. For the obsidian farm we also need water. Let's basically turn the lava into obsidian so it has to be on the overworld side or nether. 
Okay, so this is not too large, also it shouldn't cause any lag, it doesn't really require any entities and not even a lot of tile entities, it's just a couple of hoppers. So you can yeah, definitely build this anywhere without having to worry about lag. So we really don't have to be picky with the location for this farm. So I decided just to go north, I think it's north here, actually south, to go south a little bit and after 100 blocks we can just dig into the Nazarek and build the lava farm here. Or I checked as well what's on the overworld side and it doesn't even matter. So just didn't want an ocean biome so we can build the obsidian farm here somewhere. Okay, we're almost done with the mining. Unfortunately, I still don't have any access to a working 1.17.1 replay mod version. So we'll have to wait a bit more for good time lapses. But yeah, almost done here with the digging and then we can build the whole farm right here. All right, there we go. The lava farm has been built up. The most annoying part was actually placing down all of those lava sources here. So flowing lava is not enough. You need an actual source on top of the dripstone. And since we don't have a lava farm yet, we had to go to the nether and bucket it, which wasn't really that great. So I'm really looking forward to having a lava farm um, to get it from there next time. Especially because we need to build the bigger farm for the obsidian later. We need five times as much lava. And this has been sitting for a while as well. So all the cauldrons actually filled lava. We can test it out real quick. All right. So first I need to fill my inventory. The lava buckets are thrown out. Then I can already start, just press the button. I might actually get pushed down with a trapdoor for a moment. And then we can start. Okay, so just need to AFK for a bit over two minutes. And all the buckets will be put into shulker boxes. So let's see what we have right now. We have 21 shulker boxes filled with lava buckets. All right, it's a good start. We need a bit more. We need a bit over a double chest here filled with shulker boxes so we can build the obsidian farm. Apart from that, we are pretty much ready to go. We have a portal links to the overworld. We can just start building.
All right, here we go. So this is quite a build. The Obsidian Farm. It took us about three hours to build this up during a live stream, and 10 minutes ago I started this up for the very first time. Okay, let's actually check out what's going on here. So this is a three-player farm. A multiplayer server, there's really no point trying to make every farm one player only. Recently somebody actually complained about in the comments that earlier I tried to make single-player farms for everything in Cycraft before we had the carpet bots and it was way more interesting. I was actually working on a single-player farm of this version, but you need definitely dual wielding to pull this off. So you need to bucket lava out of the cauldrons and mine obsidian. Um, but unfortunately this dual wielding code is very unreliable if you use a normal client. So this is not something I would recommend um, because every lag spike basically can break it. Get a huge lag spike, then yeah, sooner or later you will mine your cauldron instead of taking out the lava. It's just the buggy code there. It's just not feasible to, to sometimes do this. But if you only have one task, like only mining, only pocketing lava, and then only mining uh, the obsidian, it becomes much easier. There's a way less that could go wrong. So that's why I usually go for this. Okay, so check it out here. First account is coming in. And yeah, he gets supplied buckets here on the side. And this is basically just five modules of the lava farm. So he gets parked here. Then we run the whole program. Then the, yeah, the rail gets powered again goes back and drops down to the next layer. So it basically continuously is bucketing lava there. Gets around 3200 lava buckets per hour. So you could also just use this as a normal lava farm that you'd run all the time. It's also possible, but yeah, we take those lava buckets and send them up the water elevator here. Send them to a 50-50 item splitter. So exactly half the buckets go to the left and the other half goes to the right. Then we got a little temporary storage because if you start up the farm the very first time, you will get yeah, a lot more buckets than the system uh, can handle. System in this case, basically just yeah, two accounts mining the obsidian. So you get more lava the first time if you start this up because all the cauldrons are filled up with lava sometimes. Okay, so once the farm is running a little bit, then yeah, the amount of buckets we have here will decrease again. Okay, so yeah, we got two accounts, mining the obsidian. Um, we got this little system here that I already made a video about. So the idea here is that we always dispense lava as soon as the obsidian blocks are mined. And then basically just stand here in the water and continuously mine them away. Um, we're standing in the water for two reasons. The first one is we can't get a beacon in Peaceful, but what we can do is get a conduit, which gives us a haste one effect. Better than nothing. Um, yeah. And the second reason is um, since we actually mined obsidian a little bit faster than this is generated, um, once we run out of lava buckets, we just yeah, switch up the trapdoors here, and the player is then flushed away and stops mining the obsidian. This is just in order to regulate the speed of the farm. Okay, so we got it here. Two, two players mining obsidian. The items are sent to a shulker box filler. So this was only started a couple of minutes ago. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, unfortunately, actually, other stuff ended up in here. We have to empty this first shulker box, but it's going great. Just in a couple of minutes, we got multiple stacks. Okay, so. The empty buckets are also filtered out. There's an item filter uh, below the dispenser. And then uh, sent back to the system. So the yeah, droppers here on the side, they would always resupply the player with the... Where is it actually? Yeah, with the buckets here. So this is getting filled up from the top again. The lower buckets are just emptied. So one more thing we have to do. So the netherite pickaxe we're using, it's a bit faster than diamond. Would last for a little bit over four hours before it breaks. Um, we definitely don't want to resupply yeah, the Nazarite pickaxes. We could use diamond instead and just make a couple uh, that we get from trading. But we decided, since we have this nice trading setup, uh, to just repair the pickaxe with mending. So we got a clock here. 
Ted every so often activates the dispenser with the yeah, enchantment bottles. There you go, right in the right moment, uh, that repairs the pickaxe. So that's why we also got this item splitter at the top. Um, so both accounts would mine the same amount of obsidian over time. Um, okay, so would just have everything run into like the first uh, dispensers, then this guy on the left would mine more obsidian in the right. That's why we got the item splitter here at the top. So it can decrease the amount of XP bottles that are getting dispensed. Um, what I thought about later is we could actually have also just counted the amount of obsidian that is incoming here. And then uh, every so often, depending on the amount of obsidian we get, activate the dispensers. Would actually have been the, 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 the more correct solution, I guess. In the end, it won't matter if you dispense over its lifetime half a stack more, but I think this is actually would have been a good idea to do that instead. But we just have a clock here and this just works as well, because I definitely know how much lava we're getting uh, and adjusted it this way. Okay. So this should be the obsidian farm. I think I explained it all. I think it's a pretty nice build. Definitely a nice alternative for peaceful. And I'm still working on actually a single player version, which might be reliable with the carpet bots, but not with a normal client, unfortunately. Um, this, yeah, as I said, there's always a problem getting stuff reliable with the client and server side inputs. That's why the carpet bots are also superior in that regard. It's the all, all server side timings. Okay, so yeah, pretty good. I'm just gonna replace the striker box so it can actually be completely filled up. And then the plan is to run this for maybe 24 hours and we should get around 80,000 obsidian per day. In terms of lag, the farm is pretty okay-ish, so there's no problem running this for a while. Alright, so this is our obsidian farm. Definitely really happy how this turned out. It's definitely something that was made specifically for peaceful because of yeah, the lack of better options. But you can also use this in a normal world, I'd say, um, in case you, for example, don't have access to the end platform. Um, or you don't want to deal with a wizard that <laughs> might break stuff, then this is always the reliable option. You can build this basically anywhere in the end dimension or overworld. All right, um, as I said, I'm gonna work on that one player version that I'm afraid won't be reliable unless you either completely um, slow it down or you use a bot, then it would also work again. All right, um, yeah, that's it for the day. There probably won't be a peaceful or Psychroft episode the next four weeks because we're actually working on a new project. So something that Alan suggested, uh, the whole month of August, we want to do a blitz through the 1.17 technical Minecraft. So the goal is to do as much as we can in one month of playing the game. This will be quite exciting. I plan to do daily videos about this, probably not let's plays, more like uh, stream for five hours a day and then make a recap of what has been done um, on YouTube. I'm really looking forward to that. So the goal is to automate as much as possible uh, in one month. A lot of Psycrofters will join as well. I'm really looking forward to that. We're actually gonna start on Saturday already. So that is gonna be a quite exciting project. Uh, a lot of Psycrofters will stream, me included. Um, probably gonna be building for three or four or five hours a day then work on the YouTube stuff, and then in the evening make schematics or work in creative mode on uh, what we're gonna do the next day. So pretty much gonna no life this. Probably only gonna play Minecraft to go to the gym uh, for one month. Really looking forward to that. All right, that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.